Hi there and welcome to this lesson. This time we're doing fractional exponents. Now what I mean by fractional exponent, I mean I've got a base and in my exponent I've got a numerator and a denominator. Okay, I've got a fractional exponent. Now so far we've looked at expressions like this b uh, coefficient, base and exponent and, and my exponent up to this point was an integer. If it was a positive integer, it meant that the coefficient is multiplied by the base e times. If it was a negative exponent, it would be the coefficient is divided by the base e times. But what if it's like a half? Does it make sense to say the coefficient is multiplied by the base half a times? Okay. How much is half a times? It, uh, it, it doesn't seem to make as common sense. So we'll have to take a little bit different approach to see, well, what does it mean? when I uh, actually try and find the value uh, of a, a base with a fractional exponent. Let's take the following approach. Okay, let's say a, a is any number. Okay, a is any number. Now I have a question. Okay, which number Can uh, which number can I multiply by itself to get a? Which number can I multiply by itself to get this number a? Okay, well, let me write it in inverted commas. Okay, so it would make sense if, let's say, a is equal to 4. If a is equal to 4, then we know, well, what number can I multiply by itself to get 4? And the answer would be 2. Because 2 times 2 equals 4. Or another way of writing, asking the question is, what number can I square? What number can I square to get a? What number can I square to get 4? Well, 2 squared is equal to 4. So what number can I square? 2. Okay, now think of that question. So imagine we don't have a number at this point. We, we don't have this. We only have a, any number. Now I ask, what number can I square to get a? So I'm thinking of a number. And I want to square this number and then get a. So what number must I square to get a? Well, if you remember our one of our uh, exponential laws was that if I have a base and an exponent and I multiply my base and exponent has an exponent itself, okay, then I can multiply those two exponents. So I've got base f times e. That's an example. Now, I want to get a. What can I have inside the bracket so that a squared, some, something squared is equal to a? Okay, so I want an exponent of 1. So I want a to the power of something squared must equal a to the power of 1. Now this time, the thing that I have to have there must be multiplying 2 to get an answer of 1. Okay. And I hope you remember, that's the multiplicative inverse. It's the inverse of 2, which is 1 over 2. Okay. Is equal to A. Okay, so let's ask a different question. Which number... Can I cube to get a? In other words, I'm thinking of a number. I want to cube this number and then get answer a. What must that answer? That what must that value be that I cube? Well, it must be a to the power of a third, because a to the power of a third cubed will be a. Okay, and I can go 
which number to the power of so this was to the power of 3 the previous one was to the power of 2 which number to the power of 4 must I take to get a in other words I'm thinking of a number if I take it to the power of 4 I'll get the answer A what was bad number B well it must be A to the power of a quarter because A to the power of a quarter is equal to A now let's make it completely arbitrary arbitrary in other words we can take any value which number can I take to the power of D to get A? Okay, I'm thinking of a number. If I raise it to the power of D, I will get A. What must that number be? Well, it must be A to the power 1 over D. And that will give me, if I take it to the power of D, that will give me A. Now, what on earth does this question have to do with anything? Well, I think earlier in your school career, you might have learned of square roots. Now, if I take the square root of a number, let's say the square root of 16, I'm asking, what number must I square to get 16? What number must I square to get 16? Okay, and the answer is 4. 4 squared is 16. Okay, which means that if I, that answer 4 is is the answer, okay, so this is 16, which number can I multiply by itself to get 16, so A is equal to 16, and which number must I square? The answer, 4. In this case, the number that we had to square was A to the power of a half. In other words, 16 to the power of a half. That means that 16 to the power of a half, not a quarter, to the power of a half, is equal to 4. Does that make sense? This means, the fractional exponent means, I look at the denominator, in this case the denominator is 2, and the denominator tells me which number, or how many times, I want to square, uh, sorry, multiply the, the, the sum number by itself to get the base okay so I'll, I'll write that down maybe in a neater sentence let's let's look at this thing okay let's say um, I take the cube root of 27 this asks me what number can I multiply by itself three times to get 27 okay or what number can I cube to get 27 and the answer is 3 again the A is 27 and the answer that I get that I have to cube is my answer that I have to cube A cubed is equal to 3 so A to the power of 1 over 3 is asking the question what number can I cube to get A okay if I take this to the power of 4 I can maybe take fourth root this is called the fourth root of 16 okay and the fourth root of 16 asks what number can I multiply uh, what number can I raise to the power of 4 to get 16 and the answer is 2 which number to the power of 4 must I take to get 16 okay and the answer is 2 so in this case a or 16 to the power of 1 over 4 
is equal to 2. So what does this mean? Well, the point I'm trying to make, and I hope you are eventually getting, is that these two things mean exactly the same thing. Okay, This fractional exponent is actually taking the root of the base. Okay, So that when I look at this, a to the power 1 over d is actually asking what number must I multiply d times to itself to get a okay which brings me to our third law third law one it's actually a definition third definition okay now a third is is using this symbol okay and the answer that we get is not necessarily uh, a, a, not a rational number okay but third law one the first law is going to be if I have a to the power of an in my exponent I've got a fraction in numerator and a denominator I know that this was actually a to the power n to the power of 1 over d and what we've looked at just now is 1 over d means it's the dth root of my base and in this case my base is a to the power of n so this is the dth root of my base which in this case is a to the power of n the more important thing to know though is this direction okay because usually we're given something like this that we have to simplify and that's when we have to know that this actually means my numerator should be divided by my denominator I'll look at two brief examples okay we already know that the square root of x squared is equal to x why why is the square root of x squared equal to x? Well, we know what the square root asks, what number must I square to get x squared? Well, I must square x to get x squared. So the answer is x. Okay. Or I could simply say x to the power of 2. The exponent must be divided by the 2. Now remember, this is called a radical. The sign is called a radical. Let's call it like that, radical. It's called the radical sign, and when there's nothing in there at the radical sign, that's the, the degree of the radical. If there's no degree, it's actually a 2. Okay, so we know that if there's nothing, there's a 2, so imagine there's nothing. It means my exponents inside must be divided by 2, and then we get the answer is equal to 1. Okay, let's look at another example. I like this one. Let's take the square root of 8. Okay. There is no answer to the square root of 8 that is a rational number. In other words, it's, n it's no nice answer. If you type it into your calculator, you'll get an uh, irrational answer. But what we can do is we can say, well, this is 8 to the power of a half. Because, let's write it like this without the brackets. 8 to the power of a half. Why? Because there's 1. And uh, the 1 must be divided by 2. But now, 8 can be written as 2 to the power of 3. And that must get an exponent of a half. Now, 2 to the power of 3 is 2. Uh, 2 to the power of 3 to the power of a half means it's 2 to the power of 3 over 2. And 3 over 2 is 1 and a half. So actually what this is, is 2 to the power of 1 plus a half, 1 and a half, which is 2 to the power of 2, sorry, 2 to the power of 1 times 2 to the power of a half. Okay, now this is a very long way of, of doing this, okay, but next up is this 2 to the power of 1 is just 2, 2 to the power of a half Okay. A half means it's the square root. This is the square root of 2. So the square root of 8 can be simplified as 2 square roots of 2. Okay. Does that make sense? The square root of 8 can be simplified to 2 square roots of 2. 
Let me leave it there. Uh, we'll definitely look at more examples of the day we've covered a few third laws, and uh, I'll see you in those videos. Enjoy!